Okay, so once again, we have several different sprue sizes. This is a six gauge sprue, this is an eight gauge sprue, and this is a 10 gauge sprue. And it is appropriate because we're feeding to the front of the star that we're going to use the six gauge sprue to mount to the point of our star and then mount that to the base of our rubber bottom for our casting flask. And when you're dealing with a hybrid of PLA, it's really tricky because the melting points are so disparate. You wanna make sure that your sprue wax is relatively sticky and that you get your printed part hot enough to receive the wax. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll take the hot tool and I'll prime the details of the surface with the hot tool just to warm it up so that there can be a good bond. And it's very easy to design 3D printed sprues, but not everyone knows how to do that or has the time and patience to design 3D printed sprues to the part. So it's always good to think about how you can get away with just thermal forming your part or doing a hybrid where there's some wax and some PLA. If you have a wax printer, you're very fortunate. Most people don't have those. So we're going with the standard PLA stock. And the trick here is I'm just trying to get enough wax onto the tip of the star so that we have something to bond to. So I'm not trying to bond the sprue itself immediately. I'm trying to create a small hybrid of wax embedded into the PLA so that the wax can bond to the wax part and the wax is already adhered to the PLA part. So just priming that surface to receive a similar material. So the trick here is to relax, not to breathe too heavily, and then just hot cut through your piece so that your material is stuck to the surface, and then take the time to let it chill, and then you can back blend your material so it's uniformly bonded to that star shape, okay? And it does need to be perfect, but it does help if it is perfect, okay? It's much easier to clean up in wax and PLA than it is to do in metal. So just take the time to get that detail work done and then let it cure, right? Let it cool. And so in that, that time, you can then switch to your next part <coughs> and do the process again, right? So we're just gonna line this up here. And once again, I'm going to prime the surface with a little bit of wax. So we've got something to bond to. And I would like to point out that this top star is actually a slightly different version than the remaining five tiers. This is a taller version. And I chose this star to be on the top because I thought it would behave as a better sprueing mechanism, a better funnel for all the metals, knowing full well that if I were to add a sprue to it, the flow dynamics would be ideal and then it's got the different style with the legs going straight out rather than the printed stack coming all the way up from the bottom. So the sad part about priming this with the wax is you lose that 3D printed texture. So if that's something you're trying to showcase, just know you're gonna want your next following stars to be the ones that show off that texture. If you're trying to hide it, that's going to work to your benefit, but if you're trying to show it off, it's going to work to your detriment. So just be aware that that happens as you do the coating. And it's really painstaking to try and coat these uniformly so that none of the layers show up, but it's surprising how a little bit of wax in the flow dynamics will take all of the texture completely out of your design, and you can just scrape it off with your fingernail without much effort at all. Now we've got something good to bond to.
heat our tool, come back to center. Cut off our sprue. And oftentimes I get the question of, well, how long do you want that sprue to be? And the answer is you can always cut it shorter. You can never cut it longer. So give yourself a little extra material to work with in case things don't go perfectly the first time. And then come back and trim it to your final length as you attach to your sprue base. So just go back and forth and make sure everything's attached and blended well. And then anywhere where you have significant pooling, like right here we have significant pooling, you can use the back end of your tool to scrape that off. And then come back once it's cool and clean it up. Okay. So I'll switch to time lapse for the rest of the cleanup. Okay, so let's talk about this balancing act. So as you go to sprue your part, one thing you need to be aware of is as your wax is cooling, the weight of your material can compress the wax and force it to deform. And depending on how your wax joint is built up and the type of wax you've chosen, if it's extremely flexible, it's going to want to tip one way or the other. And that can lead to problems when you're actually going to invest because the weight of your plaster can push your part back or forth. If that's the case, you can use more sprues to support your pieces at the base of your button, or you can redesign your sprue system so you're coming from a different direction. So what I'm going to show you now is just the general centering of mass as you get the base of your sprue to stick to the base of your flask. Okay, so this sprue right here to this base right there. So it's really about getting a small little reservoir built up so when I stick this in I know the wax is hot enough to receive the sprue and I want that to create a strong weld joint so I'm placing my piece, my hot tool, directly in that button and then you're just holding it there waiting for it to set up. But there's only really three seconds of actual work that you're doing. And so you'll notice this piece in the back keeps wanting to tip over just from its own weight. And so that might be an indicator that it was sprued poorly or it's too heavy or you need a secondary sprue to support it in one fashion or another. But the center piece of the larger mass seems completely stable. So we're going to just push that to the side and then we're gonna do it again with this smaller piece, okay? And we don't need this much sprue on it, so we're just gonna cut that short, just a little bit, and then attach it to the base. Just cut a little bit off, like so. Get that out of our button. Come here, you. Make sure our tool is nice and hot. And then just press down with the, the hot tool, the wax, and then remove your hot tool. And then the hard part here is just not moving, right? So you have to relax enough. You're barely touching it to hold it in place. So you can see this big one now wants to tip over just a little bit. It's fairly warm out today. And so the wax has got a lot of weight to support with the PLA. So at this point, all three of our parts are sprued. We can add our water and we can go to our investing step.